Hello and welcome to a brand new series. This is Field of Glory Empires. I'm going to give this game a quick introduction and we're going to set up the game ready to go. With this being the first episode in this new series, I'm going to introduce the game and we're going to set everything up so it might take a little longer than usual. The usual episodes in the series are going to run somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes, but this first one might be a bit longer. I mean, it might not be, but it, it might well be. So, regular followers of the channel will know I've just completed a Grand Tactician campaign and I'm looking for something new to start up. So, I went through my Steam list. I've got lots of games on Steam. Some I've played a lot, some I've played a little bit, some I've played... A lot in the past and then no more so this is one of those i used to play this game quite a lot i've got like uh, not lots and lots but i've got about 80 hours into it but i've not played this game for i think like three four years so i fired it up yesterday and had a little blast on it to reacquaint myself and actually really enjoyed it so i thought this might be a decent one to share with you guys on the channel you might not be familiar with it it's quite it's a bit of an obscure niche sort of game there are various scenarios we can choose, so I'm just going to fire this up. So basically, we're just going to go with it here. So you can have a grand campaign starting in 550 BC, uh, BCE, sorry, and that is uh, because I've got the Persian Empire add-on, basically. But um, we're not going to play that one. We're going to start the grand campaign in 310. The plan is to play the Rise of Rome. But before I crack on too much, if you're new here, it'd be awesome if you leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's regular content on here. I'm doing between 5 and 10 episodes a week. And if you are a regular viewer of the channel, don't worry. This wo this series won't interfere with the current things I'm playing. So I'm still playing Crusader Kings 3. There's two campaigns on the go there. And they will carry on. They, they have taken a little backseat to Crusader Kings because I've been into Grand Tactician lately. I've really enjoyed the latest series that I did on that. And I will do a new series on Grand Tactician as well. But with that in mind, I'm going to crack on and set this one up here. So we're going to start in 310 BCE. And there's another there's a, another scenario starting in 281. But we're going to start with 310. I'm going to play this on Balanced. Ideal for a challenging yet not too difficult game. The AI will get minor advantages in loyalty, decadence, reduction and upkeep. So that, I feel like that's probably a decent one to start with. Because I don't think I'm experienced or... I can't play on difficult, very hard, insane, or suicidal, absolutely not, because I'm not that familiar with this game. Like I say, I fired it up yesterday and had a go to reacquaint myself with the basics, but there are some of the game mechanics in this that I'm not 100% on, and hopefully we can discover those together and work this game and see how it goes. You know, in part, this might be almost like a showcase of this game, actually, because I don't think many people bought this game at the time. I can't remember when it came out, maybe 2019 or so. Um, but it's, it's been a while now. I did buy it on release. And to play this game properly, you actually need two games. So you need Field of Glory Empire, which is, is, is this, or Empires. Uh, and you also need Field of Glory 2. Well, you don't need it, but it enhances the game experience. With Field of Glory 2, you can export your battles from this and fight them out properly on the Field of Glory system. Which I will show you, obviously, when we get into a battle. So it's this is kind of two games in one. Field of Glory 2 and Field of Glory Empires. You can't play this without Field of Glory 2, but your battles are a little bit more basic. So I will also show you a basic battle when we get started. So we'll have a basic battle. Well, I mean, the smaller battles will be the basic battles in this because it's not worth exporting. But the larger battles are fun to play exported in Field of Glory 2. But we'll get to that soon. So we're going to play this on Balanced. I think, that, I think that's a good way to start it. I played it on Balanced yesterday. It wasn't too hard and it wasn't too easy. It was okay. This is just, it's what I'm looking for. So let's select that. Now, the game's going to load in. It's got all sorts of bits and pieces on here. Now, this game is made by Slytherin and Age Yacht. Both are, the, both are like games developers. I, I enjoy their games. I've played them for years. Slytherin, I played back in, I don't know, like 2000 or so. They brought out a game called Legion, which was great. Great fun. So... As you can see here, here we are, Grand Campaign, 310, uh, Alexander the Great has been dead for a decade, his successor, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so so we're starting, and this, as you can see, there's a lot to choose from. It's, it's a large world, all these colourful parts are playable nations, nations, tribes, you know, uh, we'll call them nations for, for, for the sake of ease. But we're going to play with Rome, I, li I like playing with Rome, I mean, it's, obviously it's fairly easy, difficulty 3 out of 5. Well, I'm saying it's fairly easy. If I get my butt kicked on here, it's not that easy, is it? <laughs> but anyway, so if we play as Rome, we can see we start off with three little regions. We've got an army on the go already. Um, but there are, obviously, you can choose major nations. So we've got Rome, Antigono, Ant 
Antigonus? Antigonus? I'm not sure. If I butcher these names, you know, it's, I'm not an expert. Carthage. I'm not even going to try that one. Uh, Lys Lysimachos. It's not actually as hard as I first looked. Macedonia. Ptolemaeus. And the Seleucid Empire. But Seleucos? 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 Not sure. And then a whole host of remarkable nations. So Syracuse, uh, Sparta, you know, Pontus. If, you, if you've played like Rome and things, Rome Total War, you'll know these these factions they're basically the same and um so it, this game is pretty it's, it's a grand strategy game for sure and then other factions there's bits and pieces i mean so we could play in britain we could play as the bretone bretone i not sure brigantes um you know hiberni the picts and caledonians anything you want really so there's lots to choose from but i, I think we're going to play with rome certainly for this first playthrough and I'm aware that this is not a hugely popular game, so I guess if nobody watches these videos, we'll only have the one playthrough. But uh, that's that's fine. I mean, it's, I'm only a, a small channel anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I like to play the games that I like to play, and if other people want to watch, then that is amazing. But uh, yeah, there we go. So we're going to choose Rome. Let's go. So we, we are Italic. That's the that's our, our people. We're, we're Italic people. So let's have a little quick read here. At the start of the game, Rome is just emerging as the dominant power in central Italy. So, yeah, you can see we've just expanded from Rome itself. Like, So, basically, it's no longer a city-state. It's now a regional power. By 281 BCE, it had, be it had come to dominate the south, but this also brought war with Carthage. By 202 BCE, Rome had survived near destruction. However, the start of an empire spread over Italy, Spain, and North Africa, uh, and with growing involvement in Greece. The next two centuries saw territorial expansion. We know what happened to the Roman Empire. We don't need to read the rest, I don't think. Uh, so we start the, we start as our ruling party is the Popularis Party. So that's kind of that's kind of your role. You're playing part of a like an overseer of the military for this for the party. I, I think anyway. That's kind of how it feels. Um, and we start at war with the Senones, which are these guys here, Celts, I believe, like Italic Celts. Oh, well, they are Celtic, but they live in Italy. <laughs> so. As you can see, if we, if we choose to start with these guys, the difficulty would be 5 out of 5. And interest, 3 out of 5. I don't know what, exactly what they uh, gauge the interest on. But let's have a look at uh, gameplay. Rome has many advantages and a few drawbacks. So, I mean, Rome is obviously a power that rises hugely. So, you've got potential to grow. And that's one of the reasons it's obviously fun to play as the Romans. To see if you can emulate what they did. Modifier. So, you start with a few different pieces here. Uh, curses. Honorum. Honorum? I don't, I don't know. Like, like I say, if I'm butchering this in, I'm butchering it. Uh, bonus to the number of leaders this national nation has available. The Roman cursus honorum was a political system where young politicians had to follow a specific order of challenges, civic or military. So, like, people went through the military before they became senators and things like that in the Roman history. Uh, ensuring a decent level of expertise, which was acquired progressively. Leader force pool plus two. Leader quality bonus plus two. Pax Romana. Rome can assimilate more easily than other foreign populations. It also grants two special buildings, the Colonia and the Municipium. Municipium. We'll get to that uh, as it comes, but basically it's a, converting, a conversion of your culture. You get a 10% bonus. Builders. These people are expert artisans and builders skilled in construction work. High military experience. So leader force pool plus two. Uh, bonus of 15 XP when a unit is created and leader quality bonuses again. We're a republic and we have an aristocratic elite. Decadence gain further increased by 10. So this game works on decadence. Like decadence is kind of what seeps into empires and starts the decay of empires and, and nation states and stuff like that in this. It'll become more apparent as we start playing. You, so in this you get decadence or aging tokens and progress tokens depending on how well you're doing. This game's not about just painting the map. I mean it is partly about that but you've got to take your time. You've got to develop your regions. Again we'll get to that. But for now we'll, we'll start with Rome and I'm going to click OK. We're going to start. So this is just the information again showing us. Running AI. See that it ran across the top. It does this between every turn. But obviously I'll cut most of this out when we're in game. A fight for survival. The Roman Republic has to contend with several threats right from the start. The Senones, a Celtic tribe to the northeast, are eager to repeat the sack of Rome. They are your main enemy at the start. 
as they are already at war with your nation. The Etruscan and Samnites are your neighbours and will have to be pacified one way or another. The Roman army consists of two disciplined Roman legions and two allied legions called Alla Alleae. Alleae? I don't know. Alleae. I don't know, I don't speak Latin. But two extra legions can be recruited very rapidly. It is advisable to do so as things will get tense very soon. So it's kind of telling you, you know, this is what's going on, this is what's going down. So let's have a quick look at the overview here. Again, if you're familiar with the game, I will, of course, chapter this video. I chapter most of my videos. So if you are familiar with this game already, if you already know how all this stuff works, then feel free to just skip ahead in the chapters to where... I'll, I'll, I'll chapter it as like start of play or something along those lines. It'll be it'll be obvious. So let's have a quick look at this overview. So this is Rome. This is our main province, obviously. Our main region. So Latinum. Latium, sorry. Latinum. Latium. So that's this is the city of Rome in the middle. You can see on the map here. I mean the graphics are not amazing on this game, but they're quite nice. I quite like them. You can see it's a walled city. And we can this is like reflected in here. So large walls. It's got barracks already. Campus Martius, and uh, it's the capital, obviously. So it gives this all this stuff gives you some bonuses here and there. The this top section is food and sanitation and the like. So we've got an aqueduct built here already, and we've got these guys here. You see these little fellas? So the guys wearing clothes, those dudes, they are citizens, and these guys are slaves. So these are the people we have working in this industry. So in the kind of uh, agriculture side of things and healthcare so we are currently getting plus 16 food and this region is going to grow to population 15 in eight turns if we move some of these guys away let's let's say we move these dudes down to down to here you can see there's no growth and we're losing food so obviously we want to keep these guys in here the next section is uh your infrastructure part which is like for recruiting units it's for building new buildings now buildings in this are a little different than in some other games you can't just choose any old building it gives you a list of buildings that are available so for example here we are today we can choose to build a farm we could be build a salt house we could build a wheel maker watchtowers coastal market or a tavern all these things give you different bonuses depending on what resources we have available and obviously what what each building does so a farm for example creates 15 uh, 13 food on top of what you're already creating you get a bonus you get a bonus from wool so if you already have another farm here like a cattle farm or a, a sheep farm obviously then you get extra bonuses and so on and so forth so this is a salt house obviously if you have salt available locally then you make more money but we lo we would lose 12 money because we have to import salt wait as you can see um Oh, I don't actually want to build it just yet. Um, so as you can see here, we'll get five extra food. Health will be improved by eight. That all helps with the growth of your population. Uh, but it will cost us two infrastructure points and 12 money because we need to import salt. Trading required. Now, it does this automatically, so you don't have to mess around with trading. But we're not going to build that to start with. I think we're going to build a tavern. It's going to improve the loyalty but we will need wine. So we're missing a bonus of four from olive oil and honey. So if we had those available within our empire, we would make even more from this. But let's build a tavern. The tavern's going to take three turns to build. It's indicated by the little three there, and the little one at the bottom indicates it's a tier one building. So it's a basic sort of building. And now, if you remember, the little tooltip told us that we should recruit two more legions. So this is our military force in Latinum. Latium. Why am I saying Latinum? It's Latium. Okay, so this is... This is our force here, our main army. Let's rename that. We'll, we'll rename it like the campaign army. That way we'll remember who they are. So this is our campaign army. It's commanded by a guy called Bestia. Offense rating, two. Defense rating, zero. And he's in excellent health and only 18. So he's got some chance to grow. None of these guys are experienced. Um, the, the eight here is our combat power. So this other legion is a bit stronger at 11. All this stuff will become more apparent once we actually fight a battle. Um, so we have two legions. These are the guys. These are also legions, heavy infantry, but they are our allied troops. So they're from the Socii, so not Roman Italians. Uh, and then we have um, what you would think would be Velites, but they are Velites. So these guys are like light skirmisher infantry. Then we have some cavalry and some light cavalry. So it's not a huge army to be playing around with, but we're going to recruit those two legions as they suggested. So this is our recruitment pool. We can't recruit lots at the moment. Um, we can recruit 
like two legions. It's going to cost us equipment. We only we don't have very much, but we'll have to build that up. So going on from this, so equipment is here. Let's have a look. We have. Our money across the top, our money income. There's a little breakdown there showing us exactly what's coming in and out. So we're plus 20 -ing at the moment per turn. Our manpower, which is obviously important. You don't just have unlimited troops in this. So we're gaining 32 per turn. That's pretty good. Metal production. Obviously, without metal, you can't make weapons. And this is our legacy, which, again, we'll, I'll go into more detail about the legacy points as we go on. Um, now this little flashy bit up here is regional decisions. There are sometimes regional decisions you can make, so recruit local units. So we could recruit local units into here, uh, it will cost us 100 gold. This becomes more helpful as you spread out a little, we don't need to do that at the moment. Naval support, again, it's something you can do, it costs you some metal and it tells you, I mean, we'll go through these when we actually go to use them. Forage the land, you know, we don't want to do this just yet. It will restore one effectiveness to troops having none left, ensuring the removal of the exhausted penalty in battle, which makes your troops weaker when you're fighting battles. But again, that's something we'll go ahead and do as the game progresses. So anyway, I feel like I've, I've set the premise here. So maybe we can get started. We're going to press... We're going to, we're going to start the game, basically. So our army is here. We're recruiting two Legion troops as set up already. Um, they'll be available next turn. We could actually also add some Walites to that. And we could even add some more light cavalry. So let's go ahead and do that. But actually, it's not because it's going to take us over our equipment amount. So we get, we're going to get rid of these two guys, actually. So we're going to leave equipment in. We don't want to be in a negative holding for equipment. Okay, so we're, we are building a tavern here to help improve um, kind of entertainment of the region keep the people happy we can also build something here so this is uh tiberus italy superior that's the province and we can we've, we've already got some stuff here we've got a waterfall obviously it doesn't have a slot usage this is a regional perk a local site in the region with a positive effect on land output and development a powerful waterfall allows extra productivity on local farms so this would be a decent place to build up our farming areas so let's go right ahead and do that. We've got this available, flax field. Cheap agricultural structure restricted to non-arid terrains. Flax is used both for food and clothing since the beginning of history and will allow the weaver shop and its upgrade, the spinning mill, to generate a decent amount of extra money. So this is a nice little base building that we're going to start up off in here. And we also control this region, Campania, which is uh, in Italy inferior. So this you can see that's a different province. These two, we can't form the province yet because we haven't got enough regions, but these two places are in Ita Italy, Italia Superior, and this is Italia Inferior, which is all of this kind of southern part, well, most of the southern part of Italy. You can see these little spinning bits going around the cities here. So that, for example, is for Tarentum, which is an objective of ours. So we should capture this place. Same with this place up here where the Sinonis are. So that's Ancona in Picenum. That's the place we need to capture, and that's the place we will capture. But first, we're going to recruit these troops. Let's see what we can build in Campania. Again, we've got some decent structures here already. We've got solid walls, a training ground, which is going to improve the quality of troops coming from there. Stud, which is obviously for horses. A wheelmaker. We've got a market already, a harbour a commercial port, and paved roads. So the roads are very important, and they will show on the map so we can see the roads are running here. The little faint lines. What's available to build? A herbalist, so that's a health building, which is also going to improve manpower. A ranch, which is going to give us five food. A decent low-tier structure, also produces cattle usable by the smokehouse, tannery, taverns, and caravan buildings will slightly enhance the production of farms. But we're going to go with the herbalist, I think. Okay, so I feel like that's a decent first turn. We've got a few units queued up to recruit, and let's end the turn. So this is kind of the tokens I was talking about. So see, see these empty tokens? They're aging tokens. That these occur as empires or tribal chiefdoms regress. It'll become more apparent as things go on. So we are ranked 66th at the moment. We just got plus 7 legacy. 
Um, so we want to work towards getting progress tokens, which will then bring us up to a glorious republic, and then eventually we can go into an empire. All of this probably sounds like gibberish at the moment, but it, it'll make sense. So let's have a look then. We've got two new generals available to serve Rome. I mean, we don't need them. There's something going on here. The presence of pestilence near Tib Tiberus leads to serious epidemics. So we've got problems here. So for three turns, uh, there's a an epidemic outburst. So this is obviously things like this happen all the time in the game. That's going to give us a loyalty penalty of 10, health penalty 25%, manpower penalty 50% because obviously everyone's sick. Let's have a quick look through this actually. Building slots, so we've got four, we've got four occupied and nine available. They increase as your population increases. Uh, so loyalty is only at 49, which is pretty bad, but I'm sure it'll resolve itself. Um, decadence, so this this all works towards your aging tokens and progress tokens. It all comes together. It's one of those mechanics that I can't 100% remember about this game, but that I'm hopeful we can work out as we play on. Defensiveness, I mean, obviously how defensive the, the uh, province is. All right, so we can see we're making decent equipment extras. So, for example, here we're creating 12 lots of equipment from the population. I mean, it's obviously just from local industry. Rome creates 36. That's lots of equipment. I mean, lot, some of this equipment obviously gets doled out immediately to active units. Okay, then. So we've got those guys available, those two new legions. Let's move up into this territory here, the Sinoni's territory. And let's see what happens. We're still building here. The flax field's got one more turn to go. Two more turns for the tavern. And one more turn for the herbalist. Let's send our legion in and see how this goes. All right, then. So... We're going to go straight into a battle. Rome, under the command of Bestia. We've got our combat power of 74 with 13 units. They have combat power of 44, but they have 16 units. So, I mean, they're weaker than us, but they have more men. I saved this just before I did this, right? So, I'm going to show this both ways. So, we're first, so, uh, well, maybe, no, maybe I won't. We'll just export the battle. We'll actually fight this battle since it's the first one. We're going to export it and have a look. So to export it, we click Export Battle, and it's going to export the battle to play in a compatible version of Field of Glory 2. So it's going to then take our troops and their troops and match them up in Field of Glory 2. So I'll be back and see you in Field of Glory 2 in a moment. So we actually have to close this game, and we have to launch Field of Glory 2. This is the, this seems crazy to me nowadays, but uh, that's how this works. So here we are. I'm loading in Field of Glory 2, and we're on Field of Glory 2. It's loading in. We simply... Oh, I'm going to have to change the... Down here. It's a bit loud for my liking. Uh, the difficulty in things doesn't make any difference in this. It, it takes the difficulty from the battle. Uh, from, from the campaign. So let's have a look here. Battles. And we're going to go to Empire Battles. And it should just import the game straight, our battle straight from there. Right, so. The aim of this game is not to kill all the enemy. I mean, you can, I suppose, if it happens. But the aim is to rout 40% of their troops and 25% more than you have lost. So if we rout them 40% and we've lost none, or we've lost 10%, that's fine. But if we've lost 30% of our men, we would need to rout 25% on top of that. You can add one more general. So let's proceed. So this is the Field of Glory system. I've also got uh, Field of Glory Medieval, which is the newer game, which is pretty good as well. But this is the ancient version. So you can zoom quite close in. You can see these guys. These guys are our legionaries in red. These guys are the allied legions. And these dudes are our cavalry. So we can add another general. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just give it to one of these guys. So you can. it gives you a bit of information about these dudes. So this is one of our sub-generals. So let's have a look at these guys. So this is like the fourth cohort of the early Legion, early Republican Legion. So these guys are Veteran, Hastati, and Prinkapes. These guys, who are a little bit different and a few less of them, are the Triari. You can see here that armor, so they have some armor. Quality is above average. These are the allied troops. They are heavy foot, uh, impact foot, and swordsmen. So these are impact fighters. We're going to put these guys in the flank in these woods. So this is the deployment phase. So we're quickly deploying. Okay, so our Legion Marys, Marys are really good at fighting in the open ground, and that's exactly what we're going to do with them. I'm going to pop some of the allied troops on the flank, actually. So we're going to have two on that flank, and two on the other flank. So this is our commander, Bestia, is with this cavalry unit. So we don't have very many troops at all. 
These guys in the front are the Velites, uh, so they are our javelin troops. You can see uh, quality is average. I think they're all average here. Yeah, they're all average quality. Um, but the quality of our infantry is pretty good. So above average, highly superior, um, highly superior again, highly superior, highly superior, above average, and the allies are above average as well. So they are pretty good troops here on the whole. And like I say, I'm by no means an expert at this game at all. Uh, I haven't played it for a long time. Uh, so if you if you are familiar with this game and you've played it a lot, do drop it in the comments if I'm what I'm messing up. I'm bound to mess some stuff up. Uh, it always happens. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. If you know better, then do mention it in the comments. But for now, we're going to end deployment. We'll just, I've just kind of formed them basically in the line. Here we are. There's the enemy. So they're coming straight forward. Uh, this is actually going to be a really tough battle. The troops are reasonably poor quality. I mean, some of them are at least. Which is one thing going for us, I suppose. We've got to watch this rough ground because that's going to disorientate some of our heavy infantry. Um, we are outnumbered with cavalry. They've got a lot of noble cavalry on their left flank. So we're going to disperse some of our infantry that way. In a moment, anyway. First, let's move forward with our light troops. Hopefully they can harass the enemy a little. Urban militia. So these guys, I doubt they'll get into the fight. But if they did, we will route them pretty quickly. We will have to be careful with our light cavalry. But I'm going to advance them forward. I'm going to try and just ignore this cavalry on the flank for now. We've got our heavy cavalry there to, to watch the flank. And we'll stick a couple of these units that way. But for now, we're going to advance our infantry to the edge of these woods. Uh, for some reason, these guys are which messed up the whole situation. Great. <laughs> so we will shift some of these guys that way to deal with the cavalry threat on the flank. And they've also got chariots on the flank. Let's see what he does with his cavalry. That'll be an interesting one to see. He's just moving all his troops forward, basically, because he's... These are Celtic barbarians. Don't know any better. <laughs> All right, then. So we're going to move forward. We're going to... These guys are just going to try and slow down the enemy, basically, and take out a few of them. We're going to pepper them with javelins. 18 casualties. That's not a bad start. So the enemy will no doubt try to charge these Wellitaes, which is fine, they should they should escape from that. They should be able to pull back. Um, okay, I'm going to be a bit more careful with these guys because we do not want to advance into the rough ground. We want to fight them in the open ground, so... I'm actually going to advance them instead of a unit altogether, we're going to advance them like this. So you can see we're getting a penalty here, severely disordered, because we're in the woods. So we're going to keep these guys as a reserve. This is, this is absolutely going to be a tough battle. So these guys are going to refuse the flank. Let's see how this goes. It could be a disaster. Oh. I didn't even attack the force guys. Never mind. Yeah, so this is this is what we wanted. We wanted to string string them out a bit. We wanted our men to cause them trouble, basically. Oh, but they've actually caught into our Velites there. What a nightmare. So those guys are going to break. All right, so this was not a very good start. I'm 
gonna send these light troops over this over towards the left flank. And these guys are screwed, obviously. Ah, so they pulled back actually, and it's exposed their flank. Ugh. All right, fine. <laughs> Our infantry's not going to move forward. We're going to let them come to us. These guys will break. Oh, they help him. Oh, oh. Yeah. It's not a good start. Yep, so mistakes already. Lots of mistakes in this battle. As per usual with my battles and campaigns. <laughs> These guys are screwed, basically. I should never have sent them that way. Maybe we can kill their general before it gets too bad. Let's see how it develops. Ah, so at least he's managed to pull back, pull out a little bit, and chase those chariots away. So let's see, let's see what happens there. Hmm. We don't want to overextend ourselves. These guys are finished, basically. They're going to flee. Uh, that's fine. Do we push into them? Oh. So these allied troops are pretty poor. 2% chance to win on impact. 32% chance to lose. That is actually a real, real problem. Alright. Well, it is what it is, I guess. Let's see if we can smash these guys. Send our legionaries in there. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, disrupted straight away. So the different classes of organization are disrupted, then fragmented, and then they flee, basically. Oh! So we went straight to fragmented there. That's outrageous. How did that even happen? And again, straight to disrupt. Hopefully that'll protect these guys to rally a little bit. I mean, this is an actual Legion unit. That is garbage. I, I hate shit like that. <laughs> Not percent chance to win. Oh, these these guys are indestructible, it seems. All right, then. Let's end the turn and see what happens here. Those relatives are actually still fighting, so... Fragmented, so it's yeah. It's absolutely possible I could lose this battle. In fact, it's looking quite likely that I will. So they held firm. I'm surprised about that. So this legion is fragmented. I mean, what on earth?
enemy general falling. That's good at least. Good news. This will be one of their sub generals, I guess. Well, so the was that the Velites rally, rally down to disrupt it. So that's good. So as they recover cohesion, the 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 units change over. In fact, they've they've gone back to steady. Okay. But these these Hastati Prinkapes, the Allied troops here, they're going to break next turn, I think, unless some sort of miracle occurs. So the lines, I mean, we're holding okay. 0% chance to win, 36% chance to draw, and lose 64% chance. I mean, these guys here, that's their commander, so this is their full general. That's why, so this is obviously their elite warriors. And they are absolutely going to kick our butt here, I would think. I want to keep these uh, Velites there. They're going to chuck another bunch of javelins into them, kill another 32. Excellent. So the cohesion of this unit won't drop because they'll be flat charged by light troops. So that's, that's not really much point. Maybe we can send them this way. This cavalry unit is <laughs> in trouble. Let's pull them out if we can. We're going to pull up this way and see if we can pull them around and do something with them. We've got some of our light cavalry in the rear. I'm going to stick some pepper in, into their urban militia troops. Alright, let's fight. Oh! 55 casualties. Some of, the, some of these warriors are very, very tough. I'm going to bring the Velites down this way. We're going to swing them around. It's worth noting that to say that this game works on RNG almost exclusively and it yeah it's, it, it definitely bollocks sometimes if you cheat a little anyway and it's it's actually it is a tough game as well not sure why we have such low chances to win in these fights but we're going to bring them in to take some pressure off these guys and see how that happens that's alright So this is it is a tough game this and I, I do like it but it, it, it also annoys us it annoys me a lot let's end the turn I think we've got everyone moved and that's some of their guys routing that's good news but the units surrounded held firm so they can't lose cohesion when allies route so the, these relatives are back to disrupt it Oof. Yeah, they've, they've broken it takes us to 6% broken now on 4% oh that unit's broken I didn't see that coming but these guys are away yeah held firm that's good news at least the rest of the guys held firm So you can see this is not like your, your uh, Total War type of game at all. It's turn-based and it's RNG and it's also bullshit. <laughs> so we've been pushed back into the woods here, totally fragmented. So this Legion unit is actually fighting three, three enemies now. That's alright, we're keeping some of their units busy chasing this cavalry, that's absolutely fine. Oh. Hmm, disrupted, so we're going to break in the centre here. And that is absolutely a problem. They've pulled back out of combat. them 
those guys broke himself, opens up the central units to turn on the flanks. Our cavalry is in pursuit, that means we can't control them for now. All right. So let's go ahead and turn our men. So we're going to smash into the flanks. These guys had a tough time in battle. I think I'm going to keep them back for now. These guys are in trouble as well. But we're going to help them out here. Ooh. Low, low percentage chances, but we've got to slam them in somewhere. So now I like cavalry to give these chariots a, a run for their money. I'm going to keep these guys right where they are to watch out for this cavalry coming. Keep swinging these light troops, the Velites, around. Maybe I'm going to send this troop over this way to the other flank. If I could pull these guys out, I would because they're fragmented, but there's nowhere for them to go. Chances are they're going to end up charged by these guys, so we're going to move this legion in here to attack oh they have 45 men in that attack I don't understand why we're losing so many men against these usually it's like the legions usually make pretty quick work of the of the uh, enemy units but you know it is what it is um, so that means that we can at least turn these guys to meet this threat We could maybe even smash these guys out of the way. Let's have a look. Flank attack. Oh, so they've broken. That's excellent. And it's disrupted those guys. That's awesome. So these guys with the urban militia, that's really poor quality troops. Um, so hope if these guys can hold, which is doubtful, I'll be able to turn these allied legionaries and smash their flank. At least I think these guys are safe for the next turn because the legion's blocking them. We'll see. Uh... Have we moved everyone that can move? I think so, except for these guys, but I don't know if I want to put them in there. I don't really, even though those guys need some pressure taken off. Let's do it. We've got to, even though it's, I mean, nah, it's a lose. It's a 56% chance to lose that fight. So we are actually, I'm going to turn these guys that direction. So then, when if these guys break, well, if, when, we can at least move that way. Okay. Still be able to pepper those. There's a 16 casualties for those urban militia troops. These guys, let's keep them moving. And maybe I can even swing them around and hit these urban militia. We'll see. Or hit the rear here somewhere. Uh... For now, this is all I'm going to do. These guys are staying still. They've already blasted, and hopefully they can pull out of any combat. But it's never a sure thing. So they're on 21% route, and we're on 11, so it's pretty close still. Let's end the turn. Nice. Except it pushed them back. So this is this is what I'm talking about, right? So this was a deliberate cheat from the AI, I reckon. Uh, and his men have rallied, okay? So our men won't rally ever, pretty much. Once they break, at least. They hardly ever rally, but his do all the time. And this guy got pushed back because we would have smashed him in the flank and killed his general there, basically. So the AI decided, well, let's, let's just get him disrupted and push him back so he can't be flanked. That's what happened there. 
And they held firm there as well, even though they were fragmented and lost these men. Yeah, uh, never mind. It happens. And we were flanked. Pretty tense, pretty tense fight. They're gonna break. Yeah. We held firm at least with the other troops, but they've now broken through, which is obviously a problem. See our men running for the hills, <laughs> no, no uh, reforming there. I'm going to smash these guys into the flank. Should take them to fragmented and they break. Excellent. At least that's some good news there. So these dudes are fragmented. We're not going to get the flank bonus here, but we're going to smash in anyway. Takes them to fragmented and we're going to smash these guys in the flank as well. Which takes them to fragmented and they break. Excellent. Of course, we didn't press on to smash into those guys, which would have been nice, but it didn't happen. All right. So we do have issues here. <laughs> um. I'm going to keep harassing these. We still have no control over this cavalry, still pursuing. But these guys are now going to swing down. And we're actually going to move these this way. And we're going to hit them, the fragmented troops. 11 casualties. Didn't break or anything, but you know, it all adds up. Let's move the Velotiers in here. Hit the urban militia. these guys here if need be we can turn them and start blasting into them if this guy routes okay. there's not a lot else we can do at the moment in terms of movement uh, Move them up, even though they're fragmented, but possibly if we can smash that urban militia in the flank. But then, actually, these legionaries here... Oh, no, they're steady. That's okay. Well, let's see what it brings. Uh, everyone's in combat. These guys aren't, but I don't want to commit them. I've got the uh, Triari here, which is kind of shadowing their general. Not sure what's going to happen with him. Hopefully, these guys can smash into the rear and cause some trouble. We'll find out in a moment. The, these ally Triari, they're going to stay facing that way, keeping us our left flank covered ish. Oh, damn it. So we knew they were going to break, we, we knew it. 
someone rallied there. Some of their guys, no doubt. I didn't see who it was. No doubt I'll see it when I edit the video. So our cavalry pursue them to the to the moon basically. It's worth mentioning that when his cavalry chases your men, they'll chase them for maybe one turn. Yeah, this is a this is a really grim situation. And that's a nice break there, but they all held firm. That urban militia unit's broken. Someone rallied. Was that our guys? Oh, and some more of our guys. Excellent. Just for now saying it doesn't happen. Keep blasting them. Hmm. Our cavalry are still pursuing. Really, so they've opened their flank up. With any luck, we can smash these urban militia troops and <laughs> knock him over the threshold for retreating because that's the only way we've got any chance, really. Our men are fleeing all over the place. We are totally outnumbered. I think everyone who's fighting, who can fight, is fighting. Let's just make sure, yeah. This is not good. Blast them with some javelins. Doesn't really make much difference, but <clears throat> you've got to do what you've got to do. <laughs> More of our troops disrupted. So they have any stopped pursuing for now. Uh, militia held firm even though they're fragmented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously they did. <laughs> oh.
Let's get these guys in the flank. Send them running. <laughs> yep. We're in trouble. They've actually broken, that's nice. And we flanked those guys. But yeah, well, it was okay. Ooh. I was going to charge them in, but I'm not so sure now. These guys are fragmented. Dead. Severely disordered. Disrupted. Okay, well, they, they might be useful in a fight still. Um, these guys are going to break. I'd be surprised if these guys don't get disrupted as well then. Uh, yeah. I, th I think the battle's lost if I'm perfectly honest. You know, we've almost got them to 50% without it. But, you know, our guys are flanked by cavalry we can't really push these into any further attack because they've already acted um, things are pretty grim ah, let's get them in there oh great shouldn't have bothered ok end turn some of their guys have rallied how nice for them our oh, guys are broken. We have, we're finished here. This is the battle's over. Bar and some miracle. Yeah, that's it, we're done. Our whole left flank has collapsed. guys rallied at least so that changes the percentages we'll turn them but I mean they're not going to fight <clears throat> we had to engage them oh my gosh we had to engage them to stop them ramming them in the flanks but obviously because the AI fancies attacking him in the flank it didn't keep these men engaged absolute bullshit turn them we don't have enough points uh, right send them 
fragmented at least. We'll bring our cavalry over. Maybe we can hit there, those guys. Our right flank's doing okay. We can hit them in the flank. Actually, maybe that might finish them. No, maybe not. But it does mean we can turn these guys and we can start forming another line here, potentially. Uh, but... It's looking grim. It's looking really grim, actually. <laughs> these, these guys are stuck there, pretty much. With these guys threatening their rear. These guys on the flanks. I've got nobody to move in to support. These didn't... The, these Triari didn't engage the commander. They've pulled back. Um, and basically, we're just about done here. If there was a way to retreat, I would retreat. But I'm not sure if there is. No. All right. Oh, at least we've destroyed the cavalry. That's nice. They held firm, unfortunately. Let's see. I think I'll just come across this here. Next one moved. They're not going anywhere. That's it. So everyone's... Uh, so everyone's took their turns. Everyone's done their bits. And it's time to end turn and see what happens. This urban militia unit in here is taking a mix. They are still here fighting on. Undefeatable. Unbelievable. Because if they had pulled back, we would have pushed forward and then we couldn't have been hitting the flank. That's unbelievable. It's, it's like it honestly it really is unbelievable. Held firm, nice. <laughs> oh, at last some of their guys are breaking. But this urban militia is still here fighting. And their cavalry managed to pull out before we routed them. Yeah. Did you sleep? No, oh, the urban militia is finally broken. Way. So they had 56%, it's still not enough. So these guys are at least ready for the fight, which is nice. Oh. All right, well, I'm not sure how exactly, but they, I suppose almost 60% of their forces routed. This was an awful, awful, grim, grim battle. So let's have a little, little look at the numbers here. Uh, they feel at 15,300, we feel at 8,600. In terms of losses, we lost a grand total of 633 infantry killed, 1,279 wounded, and 113 captured or deserted. For a total loss of 2,000 men. The Gauls, the Gallic troops here, lost 8,000. So that's... Well, I mean, I'm surprised. It was a tough battle. I really didn't think I was going to do it. Um, so, yeah, again, we're done here. So we're going to close and we're going to launch back into Field of Glory Empire. And we've got that loaded in. And we're going to click on Import Battle Result. And that should then take it into the campaign and then we can see the overview here so the different colors obviously show how badly done in a unit is when when they're green they're fine uh this kind of amber color means you know they've took casualties and they've disrupted a little bit so our legion troops are <laughs> pretty decimated um but they're still in the field they're still standing they will get re reinforcements and there we are we've taken the region 
it's still processing the term. And you can see that we gained a progress token for that because we captured one of our objectives. Uh, and here we are. Under the Popularis Party governorship, objective region Picenum has submitted to Rome. Plus one progress tokens. That's how we got that. Our armies marched in Picenum and conquered the region from the Sinones. It's a great victory. We have gained Picenum, which was the seat of power of Sinones. Their treasury has been plundered, so we've got an extra 134 money. And obviously the battle has been fought. So what else has happened? We've built a flax field. We've received a new regional decision, bolster colony. So you can see that those are the regional decisions I was talking about earlier, where we had to recruit local units and things so we can bolster the economy. But, I mean, none of these are eligible for that. We've built the herbalist as well. And the popularist party, which is our party, is gaining support in the Senate, which is very strong. So this looks like a decent place to end the first series, uh, first series, first episode. We have, uh, oh, we've been given a new objective, actually, Illyrium. So that's something to bear in mind. So we've conquered this place, but as we can see, it's occupied, so it's under war control. So it's not really ours yet, because this, the Nonis are still in the field, and we haven't yet negotiated a peace, uh, in which case we would be able to ask them to see, well, command them to cede the region to us if we are strong enough in war score. And it's under pacification, which obviously gives you a bunch of penalties, as you can see there, and it has a duration of four turns. So we can't just go and press on and capture and conquer the whole world in a few turns. You've got to take your time with this game. And that is something that I really like about it. So I'm going to call this an end of the first episode. I know not that much happened in it because I was spending quite a lot of time explaining the game. Uh, I hope you've seen enough of this to make you think maybe this might be worth watching, it might be worth even buying the game for yourself, but that first battle, it was a tough battle, I genuinely thought I was going to lose, I obviously made some mistakes, like I say, I'm bound to make mistakes in this game I'm not 100% familiar with it, it's been a long time since i played it, and it is quite unforgiving in the battles and also in the campaign if I'm honest, uh, but in the battles, the RNG can be annoying the AI definitely cheats i'm not just saying that it definitely does it definitely cheats uh i think anyway it certainly feels like it does when you're playing it's frustrating but anyway so there we are this is field of glory empires episode one done and dusted i hope you liked it if you liked it leave a comment let me know what you thought of it leave a like uh if you enjoy this kind of content obviously subscribe to the channel go and have a look what else i've got going on if you're new here and if you're not new here rest assured i will continue with my usual series uh we'll be cracking on with crusader kings in the coming week so whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a great day, and I will catch you later. Turn off for now.